Hey guys, good morning. Hope you guys are all good and well on this Friday morning. I am still trying to wake up. So that's where I'm at. Um, today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about wisdom, possibly starting a series on Proverbs, just going through that, just so there's something continually to go through. And it's a good book, full of good stuff. So in Proverbs chapter one is where we'll begin. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance. To understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. Here's the, the, mo the famous one. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So the whole book of Proverbs, obviously it's, it's a bunch of collections of all of these proverbs. Well, right. Um, but these, these wise sayings, these little nuggets of truth about life in general, and you can spend a lot of time just kind of digging in into any of them, really. Um, but specifically, kind of the, the continuing theme throughout Proverbs is to know and to find wisdom. And to do that, the basis to do that is right here in chapter 1, where it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But not only that, but, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So there's, there's these two essentially two types of people when it when it comes to proverbs you have the the fools essentially who just disregard everything don't really care for knowledge don't really care for wisdom and they just like the sound of their own voice whether or not there's anything substantial behind it or not and then there's this second the second type um which is the wise person this this wise person that continually seeks to be more wise, that continually seeks more knowledge in the fear of God. And, and that's, that's the key, is that wisdom essentially comes from fearing God, but not in the sense like, ah, I'm, I'm afraid. That was weird. <laughs> but it's, it's like, it's a respectable fear that you understand that God is all powerful in a sense that you know that he also loves you. Like it's, it's, it's a strange, it's a, almost like a comforting kind of fear that where you know that he is capable of, of doing whatever, that he's capable of smiting you in a sense. But it's also respectable in, the, in that you know that he is for you and not against you and that you just fearfully respect him, which is a good thing. That can be a good thing. It is good to fearfully respect people. Not in the sense of like you're ter you're terrified of them, so you just do whatever they say. But you respect them in a sense that you have a general. Yeah, I, I'm going. I don't need to stand on that one for long. Anyways, but we're gonna be going through the book of Proverbs, um, just because there there's a lot of good stuff in here. Uh, let let the wise hear and increase their learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance. It's, it's a continual process, right? You don't just wake up one day and say, bam, I've got all the knowledge and all the wisdom in the whole world. If that were true, hopefully one day I don't have to continue doing college to, to learn the career path that I want to learn, right? You don't just wake up and go, holy crap, I know all of the knowledge that I need to know about this stuff. It's, it's a continual process of learning. Um, so with that being said, I don't want to linger too much on that. What do you guys do in order to pursue that? Cause you know, with, with all the craziness going on, I can't count how many times I've gone on social media plat platforms in the last month, last three months and just see all sorts of people just spouting out foolish nonsense while some of it is good. Some of it is substantial. There's a lot of it though that is just said 
without any sort of actual rational thinking, any sort of actual rational process to it. And and that's that's one thing as Christians that I, I highly encourage you guys to avoid is that in everything you do, everything you say, everything you think, have there be a sense of wisdom to it. Have there be a sense of knowledge to what you're doing, to what you're saying. Otherwise, yeah, you will end up looking foolish. And here's the thing. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. And you don't want to be that. You don't want to be known as a Christian that completely despises any sort of wisdom, any sort of instruction, any sort of knowledge or correction. You want to be known as somebody that is is wise in what you know, that is wise in what you do, and that what you think and what you say, it's not just done blatantly without any sort of regard to whatever is going on around you, but that you are actually a person of wisdom that a non-believer or anybody for that matter can come to you knowing that you that you have this sense of wisdom about you that you kind of seem like you know what you're doing and so these people will see that they'll respect that but they'll also see that as an example of christ all right and, that, and that's the that's the thing is that the more we pursue wisdom the more we pursue to do things out of wisdom rather than just knee-jerk reactions and that we actually seek christ and seek god's approval and his his will in what we do the more the outside world the more the secular world is going to see that and it's going to start getting them to, to think about things to, to, to watch you to pay attention to you to see if you really are what you say you are to see if you live the way you say you live Right, and, that, and that's where the, the majority of witnessing comes from. It comes from people watching you, from observing you, to see if you really do live up to the Christ, to the God of the Bible, to see if you really do have, have a different sense of wisdom about you than everybody else in the world does. So that'll I'll call that a good stopping point for there. Um, I, once again, I hope that you guys all have a really good Friday, a really good weekend. Um, I hope that you that you continue to be blessed by these devos because we've been doing them for a little bit now. And, and I really do hope that, you know, whichever, if you watch all of them or if you only watch one of us, that's fine. But I, I hope that you're, you're blessed by it and that it, it gives you guys something to con continually think about and, and meditate throughout the day. And that it, that it also challenges you because I know for sure that there's there's plenty of these devos that I watch from the other pastors, and that it definitely challenges me in a good way. So, hope you guys have a good day. God bless.